Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Lisa Martin with theCUBE. We are live day one of our dual set coverage of Dell Technologies World 2019. Stu Miniman is here with me. And we're welcoming back a couple of alumni but the, for the first time together on our set. We've got Terry Pellegrino, the VP of High Performance Computing at Dell EMC, and Nick Kukuru, VP of Data Analytics and Cybersecurity Strategist at MasterCard. Did I get that right? Absolutely. All right. Sounded right. Oh, good. So guys, thanks for joining Stu and me this afternoon, by the way. So, Terry, we'll start with you. High performance computing. Yes. Talk about that a lot. I know you've been on theCUBE talking about HPC and the Innovation Lab down in, um, in Austin. Yes. High performance computing generating a ton of data, really requiring AI. We talk a lot about AI and machine learning, but let's look at it in the context of all this data, personal data, yep. data from that we're, you know, transacted with MasterCard, for example. How are you guys working together, Dell Technologies and MasterCard, to ensure that this data is protected, it's secure, as regulations come up, as fraud is a huge, expensive Absolutely. issue? Absolutely. Well, I, I think, Nick, uh, we work together to really worry about the data being secure, but also privacy being a, a key uh, item that we worry about. Every day you get a lot of data coming through and if we let customer information or any kind of information out there, it can be really detrimental. So uh, we've really uh, spent a lot of time not only helping manage and work through the data, through the infrastructure and the, the solutions that we've uh, put together um, uh, for, for, for NIC, but we also partnered uh, with the um, uh, consortium, a project that got started, Mosaic Crown, uh, to try to focus even more on data privacy. Uh, and Mosaic Crown is, is really interesting because it's uh, getting together and uh, making sure that the, the way we keep that privacy through the entire life cycle of the data, the way we have the right tools to uh, have uh, other folks understand that, that, that critical point, uh, that, that's, that's how we got all the, the brains working together. So it's not just Dell and EMC, we, uh, Dell EMC and uh, MasterCard, it's also SAP. We have University of Milan, University of Bergamo, and we also have W3C. And we're all together back in January, decided to get together and uh, uh, out of Nick's idea, uh, think about how we could put together all those tools and processes to help everybody have more private data out there. So Nick, this was your idea? I can't say it was my idea. The European Union itself, with, with the advent of GDPR and privacy, their That's biggest right. concern was we don't want people to stop sharing data. Again, with artificial intelligence, the great things that we do with it, from securing, you know, securing diseases all the way through making sure transactions are safe and secure, they're like, we don't want people to stop, or organizations to stop sharing that data because they have fear of the regulations. How do we create a data market? So the EU has something called Horizon 2020, and one of their initiatives was, hey, we want to understand what a framework for a data market would look like, where organizations can share that data with confidence that they're complying to all the regulations, they're doing the anonymization of that data, and the framework itself allows someone to say, I can do analysis without worrying that if it's surfacing personally identifiable information, or potentially financial information, but I can share it so that I can progress the market, the data economy. So as a result of that, what we did is we put together, and I said, this is a really good idea for us, went to the partners at Dell, and said, guys, this is something we should consider doing. And our organization had always been looking at privacy. And as a result, we've done a very good job of putting that consortium together. Um, so Nick, we, we've talked with you on theCUBE quite a few times about security. Can you just give us, you know, you talked about that opportunity of AI. We don't want people to stop giving data in. There was concern with GDPR that, oh wait, I need to just stop collecting information because I'm going to get sued out of existence if it happens. How do we balance that, you know, data is the new oil, I need to, you know, keep that flowing and, oh my gosh, I'm going to get hacked, I'm going to get sued, I'm going to have the regulation, uh, you know, people's personal information, I'm going to walk down the grocery store and they're going to be taking it from me. How, how, how do we balance that? Well, the nice part is, since data is the new oil, uh, what we consider it is artificial intelligence is the refinery for that oil. So, for our perspective, is the opportunity to say, we can use AI to help somebody who says, hey, I don't want you to share my data information. I want to be private. But I can use AI to say, okay, let's filter those out. 
So I can use AI to actually sit on top of that. Uh, I can sit on AI and say, okay, how do I keep that person safe and secure and only share the necessary data that will solve the problem. And again, using artificial intelligence through data, different types of data classification, the way we secure that data with different methods of data security, how we secure those types of things come into play. And again, there's also people say, I don't ever want my data to be re-identified. So we can use different methods to do complete anonymization. How do you do that when there are devices that are listening constantly, what Walmart's doing, everybody that has those devices at home, with the lady's name, I won't say it because I know it activates it. How, how do you draw the line with ensuring that those folks that don't want certain things shared, if they're in the aisle at Walmart talking about something that they don't want shared, how do you facilitate that? Well, part of that is, okay, at a certain point when it comes to privacy, um, you've got to have a little bit of parenting. So just because you have that information doesn't mean you need to use that information. So that's where we as humans have to come into play and start thinking about what is the data that we're collecting and how should we use that information. Um, and that person who is walking through a store and we say we are listening to what their conversations are, well, I don't need to identify that's you or you. I just need to know what is the topic that they're talking about. Maybe that's the case. But again, you have to make that decision. Again, it's about being a parent at this point. That's the ethical part of data, which we've discussed on this program before. All right, so Thierry, talk to us some about the underlying architecture that's going to drive all of this. You know, we, we loved the shift for years ago. It was like storing my data, you know. Now we're talking about how do we extract the value of the data. We know data's moving a lot, so, you know, what's changing? You know, I, I talk, every infrastructure company I talk to is like, oh, well, we've got the best AI, you know, X, whatever. Sure. So what, you know, what kind of things should customers be looking for to be able to say, oh, this is something real, it's about scale, it's about, you know, really focused on my data? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I will say, first, the under underlying infrastructure, we have our, our set of products uh, that have uh, security intrinsic in the way they're designed. Uh, we really worry about uh, key management for software. We have uh, silicon-based uh, root of trust uh, throughout uh, a lot of our portfolio. We also think about a secure supply chain, uh, even thinking through uh, secure erase if you lose uh, your hard drive and uh, we can go and make sure that the data is not removed. So that's on the security front. On the privacy side, uh, as a corporation, Dell EMC is very careful about the data that we have access to. Uh, and then you think about AI and HPC. So being in charge of HPC for, for Dell EMC, we, we actually are part of uh, how the data gets created, gets transferred, gets generated, curated, and then stored, of course, storage. Uh, so what, what we want to make sure is our customers feel like we're that one company that can help them through that journey for their data. And as you heard uh, Michael this morning during the keynote, uh, getting that value out of the data. Because it's, it's really where the digital transformation is going to get everybody to the next level. Uh, but right now, there's a lot of data. And as Nick stated, this data has more personal information at times. Uh, and then I'll, I'll add one more thing. Um, we we want to really make sure that innovation is not stifled. And the way we get there is to make sure that the data sets are as broad as possible. And today, it's very difficult to share data sets. I mean, there are parts of the industry that are so worried about data that they will not even get it anywhere else than their own data center and locked behind closed doors. But if you think about all the data scientists, they're craving more data. And the way we can get there is with what Nick had talked about, is making sure that the data that is collected is free of personal information and can still be qualified for some analysis and letting all the data scientists out there get a lot of value out of it. So HPC can help make the data scientist's job simpler or simplify evaluating this innumerable amount of data. Correct. So what in the days you had an Excel spreadsheet and you wanted to run a pivot table on it, you could do that on a laptop or a lab tablet. But when you start thinking about finding a black hole in the galaxy, you can't do that on a tablet. So you're going to have to use several computers in a cluster with the right storage or the right interconnect, and that's where HPC comes in play. I and mean, if I may, on a tactical level, what you'll see with HPC computing is when someone's in the moment, right, you want to be able to recognize that person has given me the right to communicate to them or has not given me the right to communicate to them. Even though they're trying to do something, it could be a transaction. The ability to say, hey, I, have, I know that this person is, or this device that's operating here is this, and they've given me these permissions. You've got to do that in real time. And that's what you're looking for HPC computing to do. That's what you're saying, I need my GPU to process in that way, and I need that CPU to kind of meet it, and from the core to the edge to say, yep, you can communicate, no, you can't. Here's where your permissions lie. Right. So, 
Nick, uh, what should we be looking for coming out of this consortium as people are watching around the industry? You know, what, what, what you should know, we expect? For us, the consortium's about people understanding that they can trust that their data is being used properly, wisely, and it's being used in the way it was intended to be used. So again, part of the framework is, what do you expect to do with the data so that the person understands what their data is being used for, the analysis being done, so they have full disclosure. So the goal here is you can trust your data is being used the way it was intended, you can trust that it's in a secure manner, you can trust that your privacy is still in place. That's what we want this construction to create, that framework to allow people to have that trust and confidence, and we want the organizations to be able to not, you know, to be able to actually to share that information to, again, move that data economy forward. That trust is nirvana. Well, Nick, Thierry, thank you so much for joining Sue and me on theCUBE this afternoon. Fascinating conversation about HPC, data security and privacy. We can't wait to hear what's in store next for this consortium. So you're going to have to come back. Thank you. We will be back. Excellent. Thank you so much. Our pleasure. For Sue Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching us live from Las Vegas. The Cube's coverage of day one of Dell Technology World 2019. Thanks for watching. <laughs>